And we all heard about Marvel. We all heard about the X-Men. We heard of Spider-Man. We heard of Superman. But those ain't the true heroes. The true heroes are found in the Bible. The people that paved the way. Heroes of the faith. Heroes that stood against giants. Heroes that stood against nations. So this uh, Bible study, uh, this uh, sermon series will take about two years to complete. But we're going to go little by little. And today I'm going to speak about Samson. The reason I want to speak about Samson is because I want to start strong. But I'm going to end stronger. Glory to God. So if you do have your Bibles, we ask that you go to the book of Judges. Glory to Jesus. It's in the Old Testament, the book of Judges. The book of Judges, chapter 15, verses 10 through 19. When you have it, you may say amen, and you may stand to your feet. The reason we, we like to stand to our feet is when you go into a judge, a, a court, and the judge comes in, everyone rises, right? It's the same thing with God. He's the judge of judges. So when we're about to read the word or when we're worshiping God, we stand in reverence because we're honoring the God and creator of the universe. Hallelujah. Praise God. When you have it, say amen. Amen. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. I'm sorry. I went a little ahead. And the men of Judah said, why have you come up against us? This is to the Philistines. So they answered, we have come up to arrest Samson, to do to him as he has done to us. Then 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Edom and said to Samson, do you know that the Philistines rule over us? What is it that you have done to us? And he said to them, as they did to me, so I have done to them. But they said to him, we have come down to arrest you that we may deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. Then Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourselves. So they spoke to him, saying, No, but we will tie you securely and deliver you into their hands, but we surely will not kill you. And they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes were, that were on his hands, on his arms, became like flax that is burned with fire, and his bonds broke loose from his hands. Glory to God. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand, took it, and killed a thousand men with it. Then Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain 1,000 men. And so it was when he finished speaking that he threw the jawbone from his hand and called the place Ramath Lehi. Then he became very thirsty. So he cried out to the Lord and said, You have given me this great deliverance by the hand of your servant. And now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? So God split the hollow place that is in Lehi, and water came out, and he drank, and his spirit returned to him, and he was revived. Glory to God. Father God, we just come before you. We pray that anything, God, that's causing us to understand or receive your word be cast out in the name of Jesus. That your word be planted into our hearts and produce a hundredfold of fruit, Father. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we welcome your presence in this place. Amen. You may all be seated. Hallelujah. To me, that's a powerful scripture right there. Glory to God. The children may be dismissed. Sorry about that. You may be dismissed for my mom. Glory to God. The story of Samson when he faces these thousand men is a powerful story. 
There's four great things that happened that I will speak on in this story of Samson when he conquered a thousand men with a donkey's jawbone. Four great things that happened. And these four points that I will speak on are the very things that many of us are going to encounter and experience throughout our journey as we begin to walk with God and allow God to use us. Point number one that I'm going to speak on is the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you to liberate you. The Spirit of God will come upon you to liberate you. Hallelujah. When the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, he came in a mighty and powerful way. And he filled Samson with the power that Samson needed for the victory. And all of us are facing situations in our lives that we need a little bit of victory. And the reason why a lot of us don't see victory is because we're trying to do it with our own strengths, number one, or we're relying on man to help us in this battle. You can't rely on man to help you in this fight. To help you have the victory is the Holy Spirit of God. You can't rely on man. Stop relying on men. Stop looking for men to comfort you. Start looking for the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he's the comforter. Hallelujah. And he's the counselor and he's our helper. Glory to Jesus. A few things happened to Samson when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Number one, when the Spirit of God came upon Samson, the Bible says the ropes that bound him became loose. Number one. The ropes that bound him became loose. So I don't know what's binding you right now. I don't know what ropes are holding you down. But when the Spirit of the Lord comes, he sets you free. The ropes, the Bible says, became like flax. That means that they burned away when the Spirit of God came upon Samson. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So when the Spirit of the Lord comes, he liberates you from any bondage, whether it be a bondage of addiction, whether it be a bondage of sexual abuse or a abusive relationship, when the Spirit of God comes, He liberates you. I don't know what bondage people are facing here today, but God knows your bondage. Maybe it's a financial bondage. Maybe you can't break through and you're always having issues with your finances. But when God, Spirit come, He liberates you. All right? In the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty where the spirit of the Lord is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All chains are broken. What held you down in the past won't have the ability or the strength to hold you down any longer. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. When Jesus steps in the picture... He will bond you out of any situation or oppression you're facing. I'm going to repeat that. When Jesus Christ steps in the picture, he will bond you out. I don't know how many people in this place have been put in prison or been put in jail. When you get put in jail, you need a bondsman to take you out. Jesus Christ is your bondsman. I don't know what oppression you're, you're facing. Hallelujah. It could be a, a mental oppression. It could be an emotional oppression. But Jesus Christ has the power to set you free from any oppression you're feeling. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, it's possible that many of you here today have been hanging around dead things. I'm going to speak on that. It's a possible that many of you guys have been hanging around dead things, dead people, dead situations that are not doing nothing, and they're only holding you down from your purpose from your ministry glory to God and God is calling you out from among the dead he's calling you out from among those dead things glory to God see when Christ enters the picture things begin to be restored when Christ enters the picture he brings you back to life he revives you see because we could be physically here but you could be dead spiritually you could be unactive in your walk hallelujah so things begin to be restored when Christ enters the picture. And there's a possibility that you've been waiting on him to restore certain things, but they haven't been restored because you're still hanging around dead things. If you hang around dead things, what you want to come to life will not be restored. You got to start hanging around living things, 
people full of God, people full of the Holy Spirit, because that eventually will revive what God wants to bring to life in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Christ can enter your situation and free you from your bondage. Christ could pull up at any moment. The Bible speaks about Christ pulling up in a boat. He came in a boat to the country of the Gadareans. In the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 1, verse 1 through 15, it says, Then he came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the, of the Gadareans. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, which is a graveyard. And no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken into pieces. Neither could anyone tame him, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. He had a suicidal spirit. He was cutting himself. Hallelujah. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. These are the spirits talking to Jesus. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked the man, What is your name? He's talking directly to the spirits right now. What is your name? And he answered him saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. If you guys don't know what a legion is, a legion is 6,000 foot soldiers. This man had 6,000 unclean spirits inside of him. Now that's a lot of spirits. I don't know what this man was doing, but he was doing some bad stuff. For all these spirits to come inside of this man like that. Hallelujah. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now, a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us into the swine, which is pigs, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. See, these demons went inside the, the, the swine, and they still committed suicide. They still went inside the sea. Hallelujah. So those who fed the swine fled and told it to the city and the country, and they went out to see what is this that has happened. When they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, they were afraid. Wow. That's a powerful story. I don't know who's understanding this story, but this man was possessed by a legion, 6,000 demons. And for Jesus to give one word, and this man who was kind of a psychopathic, instantly became regular, instantly became a normal person. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he was clothed. This tells me that he would probably run around the graveyard naked. When you see somebody in the graveyard naked, stay away from that person. He was probably shadow boxing naked and stuff, you know? But Jesus, you know how Jesus is? Jesus went up. He wasn't afraid. And Jesus was able to cast these demons out. And after he cast these demons out, this man was at his right mind. Hallelujah. I don't know who's going through some situations, but if you need to be freed, Jesus Christ is the one that can free you. Jesus Christ is the one that can liberate you. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you're going through. When Christ comes in, he comes with power. And in this picture, he came with the power of the Spirit of God. That's why the Bible says where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter how much demons were in this man. The Bible says there were a legion, which is 6,000 foot soldiers. And they couldn't stand against the Spirit of God that was upon Jesus. And that same Spirit is with you. That same Spirit you walk with. That means that you have the power to walk anywhere you want to walk and the devil can't touch you. The devil can't put his hands on you. The devil can't torment you unless you, unless you allow him to according to the way you walk, the way you live. Hallelujah. And they couldn't stand against the spirit of God that was upon Jesus. And 
When we read earlier, the Bible says that Samson took out 1,000 men. But he did it with the Spirit of God. But now we're reading about Jesus. He took out 6,000 soldiers and he did it with one word. Who's more powerful, Samson or Jesus? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he only did it with one word. Go. Samson had to strike down 1,000 men with the power of God. But Jesus, all, ha- all Jesus had to say was, go. And they left. Just like that. That's the power of Jesus Christ. That's the power of the word. Hallelujah. Because when the spirit of God comes, he liberates. The demons in this man stood no chance against Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will come right in the middle of your crisis. And he will wreck the works of Satan. Hallelujah. And restore your life at the same time. Glory to Jesus. So remember when you have victory, the victory comes through the Holy Spirit. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Not by might, by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's a possibility many of you have been trying to do things with your own strength, with your own powers. And maybe you don't see yourself advancing or having victory. Maybe God is saying it's time that you allow me to do the work and allow me to fight for you and allow me to give you the victory that you need in your life. Hallelujah. Because it is, it is not by power, nor by might, but by the Spirit of God, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Though this man was possessed and spiritually bound, physically bound, the 6,000 demons stood no chance. The chains stood no chance. And whatever psychological condition he had stood no chance. Because all three had to bow before the presence of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And leave at the command of the commander in chief, which is Jesus Christ. In the book of Acts, chapter 4, I mean, chapter 16, verses 24 and 26, it says, Having received such a charge, this is uh, Paul and Silas, they were put in prison for preaching the gospel of God. They were thrown in prison because they were obedient to the preaching of the word of God. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet and stocks. Now, it says they were thrown into the inner prison. So this ain't the regular prison. They were thrown into the prison within the prison, which is like the deep hole, the dark hole. So they were thrown into the inner prison. Hallelujah for that, right? But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Let me remind you guys. Let me remind you guys. Everything that you guys do in life, people are listening to you. Especially when you claim that that you're a Christian. People are watching you. People are listening to you. And your testimony and the way you walk has the power to liberate people. You have the power to destroy people or liberate people. So that's why we got to be careful in the things that we do in our daily walk. Hallelujah. Because people are watching and they're listening. Glory to God. So the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Freedom. Touch your neighbor and say freedom. Why they were set free. You know why they were set free? Because they were provoking and welcoming in the Holy Spirit of God by singing hymns. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. They were set free because they were welcoming the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came, an earthquake happened and the the foundations of the prisons were shaken and the people were set free. Hallelujah. Praise God. They were stirring up and welcoming the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's why when we hear, our job is to stir up the place where worship See, it's a possibility you may not have an encounter with God sitting here, but it's a possibility the person next to you will have an encounter because that person is deciding to stir up the spirit of God. And you wonder why you don't have encounters. How about if you're not focused on who's on your left and on who's on your right and begin to worship God, look crazy doing it, and eventually you will have an experience, and that's what we come here to do. We want an encounter. And I... Christians that have been in church 40 years and they still haven't had an experience with God. You know why? And I'm sorry to say it this way, but they're stale. Glory to God. They're stale. They don't want to provoke or, or stir the presence of God. But if we start to stir up the presence of God, you will have an encounter with God. I guarantee that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. You cannot turn to man to set you free. They have no power to set you free. They have no power to set free what's internal or spiritual. Man has no power to set you free. The judge has no power to set you free. Maybe he has the power not, not to uh, uh, um, um, put you in prison, but he has no power to set you free from the internal prison, the spiritual prison. The bondsman has no power to set you free. We're talking about something spiritual here, something more deeper. Hallelujah. Man has no power to set you free from your depression. Man has no power to set you free from your oppression. Man has no power to set you free from your anxiety or your despair. I don't know what people are going through here, but these words, they're here. Maybe some people are facing depression. Maybe some people are facing anxiety and fear. And maybe you're seeking man to help you in these issues. But I come to tell you, man has no power to set you free. The only one that has the power to set you free is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of John, chapter 8, verse 36, it says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you should be free indeed. The Son is Jesus Christ. Came to set free those who are captive. Hallelujah. So Samson was set free that very moment. Not because his people set him free, but because the Holy Spirit came and set him free. Glory to God. Some people need to be set free here. God has the power to set you free today. Do you believe this word? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then right after Samson was set free, something happened. Something happened right after Samson. Glory to God. His eyes saw what God provided for the victory. His eyes saw something that God provided that he needed for the victory. Point number two that I want to speak on is God provides what you need for the victory. God provides what you need for the victory. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 15 verse 15 says, He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand, took it, and killed a thousand men with it. So right after he was set free, he saw what God provided. He picked it up and began using it. Glory to God. He was in the position that God wanted him to be in. Exactly where God wanted him to be in. Those thousands of Philistines that ran toward him, God allowed that to happen. It was necessary. And I'm pretty sure it was scary to Samson. If a thousand men right now come rushing and running towards you, you're going to be afraid, right? And I'm pretty sure they're going to be like, have you ever seen that movie 300? Spartans, when you see all these soldiers, like, whoa, what's going on? But it's only you by yourself versus all these people. Picture that, picture that scene. Samson had to be there. He saw these thousand men running towards him, but then what happened next? Something greater. The Holy Spirit came upon Samson. And when the Holy Spirit came upon Samson, I'm pretty sure he didn't fear because he knew the power was with him, the power of God. And eventually, the chains broke. He saw what God provided, and he was ready for war. Because when God is with you, it don't matter who rises up against you, you will have the victory in Jesus Christ's name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And out of all the things that God could have supplied, out of all the things that God could have supplied, God could have supplied fire from heaven. God could have supplied a big sword, right? God could have supplied a legion of angels to help him. God didn't supply none of that. Out of all the things that God supplied Samson to have the victory, God supplied a jawbone of a donkey. Isn't God humorous? God supplied a, a jawbone of an animal that's considered a peaceful animal, a humble animal, a, an animal that would never hurt no one. And that's exactly what God used to give Samson the victory that he needed. Oh my God. God is awesome. God is awesome. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And that's the weapon of choice that God chose for Samson to fight against an army that came with spears, javelin, and swords. What you have to understand is that God is showing the people it doesn't matter what you have right now. It could be something that seems foolish. But if you make yourself available to use what God supplied, God, to, God can do a miracle with the small things. God can do a miracle with that small gift that he has given you that you've been thinking is foolish. God can do a miracle with that small thing. And that thing 
If you begin to use it and make yourself available, God can take you great places. Hallelujah. I don't know what it is that God has supplied in your life, but God has given you something. And that thing that God has given you, begin to use it for his glory. And you're going to see great wonders right before your sight. Hallelujah. You know what God gave me? And I thought it was the most foolish thing because to all those that don't know me, at the age of 17, after I gave my life to God, was when I fell in prison at the age of 18 for something that I didn't even do. To all those that don't know me, number one, I, I used to stutter. I didn't know how to read. I didn't know how to speak clearly. I didn't know how to spell. After I went to prison is when God began to mold and shape me. And that thing that I was afraid to use, I was always a shy person. I didn't like speaking to people. That very thing that God supplied me with is the very thing that God is using. That thing that I never thought I would ever use. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's amazing because the teacher said I wasn't good enough. From first grade all the way to high school, I was in special ed classes. If I ain't a miracle, I don't know what a miracle is. That very thing that I've always felt that is the very thing that God is using right now. Special ed classes my whole life. I see it now as God saying, you're special to me, and I will use you. Hallelujah. You know why? You know why? Because it is not by strength nor by power, but by the spirit of God that's inside of me. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God right now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, God is looking. God is looking for a people that stop having excuses. Samson could have had an excuse and say, God, I can't kill a thousand men with a jawbone. But he had no excuses. He began to use what God supplied. He picked up what God supplied and began swinging it, and God did the rest. God is looking for a people that have no excuses. Touch your neighbor and say, no excuses. I, I, I brought a sermon on that a couple of weeks ago, which was a good one. I think I'm going to bring part two of no excuses. God is looking for a people that has no excuses. Begin to use what God has supplied, and eventually God will supply something else. But begin to use what God has supplied now, and stop having excuses. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I don't know what it is that God has supplied in your life. I don't know what your excuses are, but you got to stop the excuses and begin to use what God has supplied. Hallelujah. Praise God. The victory is, in, the victory is not in what Samson used. The victory is in what God can do through what Samson used. So the vi your victory doesn't come in what God has given you. Your victory comes in what God can do when you make yourself available and start using what God has supplied. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you begin to use it, believing that God supplied it, then you will have great victory. You will have great victory in Jesus' name. So when you use what God has made available, your enemies don't stand a chance. When you use what God has made available, None of your enemies stand a chance because now you're in God's will. Now you're walking in God's purpose. And when you're walking in God's purpose and somebody messes with you, they're messing with God. It's like they're poking God's eye because you're the apple of God's eye. Hallelujah. Praise God. So point number three, your enemies don't stand a chance. None of your enemies stand a chance. Hallelujah. Point number one, we spoke about when the power of God comes upon you, he gives you the strength that you need and he liberates you. Point number two, God always supplies what you need for the victory. And point number three, he gives you the power to have the victory. Hallelujah. So he killed 1,000 men with a donkey's jawbone. To some people, this may seem like it's impossible. But I must remind you guys that with God, the Bible says, all things are possible. Everything is possible. You can't doubt the power of God. Hallelujah. You have to understand that you can't put a limit to what God is able to do. When you put a limit to what God is able to do, you sin against God. You offend God. Because you're saying God's not powerful enough or good enough to take care of your situation. To give you the power that you need. To take you to the next level. So you can't put a limit to what God is able to do. It's a sin and an offense towards God, towards the name of God. He's able to do all things. The Bible says it. Hallelujah. If God created heaven, earth, and the universe with words, isn't a cell phone bill easy? Isn't a mortgage easy? A house, you want a house? Isn't that easy? That's easy for God. The moment that you begin believing God, then you will see God begin to move on your behalf. But you can't just believe and sit back. Because the Bible says, faith without works is dead. 
You must begin to walk in your faith and begin to put your part in. So do everything that you can with your strengths and God will do everything that you cannot do with your strengths. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we got to stop making excuses and begin to use what God has made available at the moment. Use what's in front of you. Do everything that you can with your strengths, like I said, and God will do everything that you're not capable of doing. All Samson had to do was pick up the jawbone that God supplied and begin swinging it. God did the rest. God is the one that took the army out. Not Samson, God. Hallelujah. So use what's available and stop making excuses. Your enemies will try to stop you. Yes, we all have enemies here. We all have enemies here. Your enemies could be your own fear, yourself. Your enemies could be siblings. Your enemies could be neighbors. Your enemies could be doubt. That's an enemy. And all these enemies will rise up against you like they rose up against Samson. But the moment you begin to use what God has supplied, your enemies won't stand a chance. Fear won't stand a chance. Doubt won't stand a chance because now you're, work, you're, you're walking on God's word and eventually God has your back. God has your back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No enemy will be able to stop you. No matter how much issues or people rise up against you, they will only find themselves fighting God when they try to stop you. They will see you succeed. They will see you rise in Jesus' name. They will see you walk in your purpose the moment that you decide to stop doubting God, accept Jesus Christ, and begin to walk with all your heart. They will see you succeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Because when you're called and anointed by God, no one can stop you. And I'm going to tell you guys something. Everyone in this place is called by God. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you came from. I don't care what nationality you are. You are called by God and you're special in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. If you wasn't special in the eyes of God, you wouldn't be here today. It is not a coincidence that you're here today. God wants to remind you that you're special in his eyes. Though people may not think you're special, you're special in the eyes of God. And you still have a purpose. No matter how much time you've wasted, no matter, no matter your age, you have a purpose and God is able to do it. Hallelujah. Moses was called, I believe, at the age of 40. But God didn't use him until he turned 80. I mean, if God could do it with an 80-year-old, God could do it with anybody. I don't care who you are. God did his purpose with Moses in 20 years. And there's people that are called here. And maybe you're not where you thought you would be. But God is working. Jensen Franklin says it like this. We're a microwave nation serving a crock pot God. God works in his time. We want it now and here. But God works at his time. Hallelujah. All you got to do is start believing and begin to use what God has made available. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Samson used what God supplied and God did the rest. And afterward, something happened. After Samson had the victory, something happened. Samson said, I'm thirsty. Samson said, I thirst. Hallelujah. Last, touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor and say, stay hungry and thirsty. You got to stay hungry and thirsty. You can't get comfortable where you're at. When you get comfortable where you're where you at, you will never go to the next level. When you get comfortable where you're at, you will remain the same. You will miss out on what God has planned for you. Stay hungry and thirsty. Hallelujah. So point number four that I'm going to speak on, and it's the last point. Those who hunger and thirst shall be filled. Those who hunger and thirst shall be filled. Hallelujah. And the book of Judges, chapter 15, verses 18 and 19, it says, Then he became very thirsty. So he cried out to the Lord and said, You have given me this great deliverance by the hand of your servant. And now shall I die of thirst and shall fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? So God split the hollow place that is Le Lehi and water came out and he drank. And the Bible says... His spirit returned to him and he revived. So this tells me that he was dying. This tells me he was probably wounded in the battle. He was fighting a thousand men. He was wounded in the battle. 
but he kept fighting. He didn't quit. And eventually, after he had the victory that God gave him, he yelled out, I'm thirsty. And the Bible says his spirit returned to him after he drank, which was he, he was dying, and he was revived. Hallelujah. My question to you is, are you becoming so comfortable where you're at right now that you're not streak, that you're not seeking or striving like before? That first love. Who's experienced that first love of Christ here before? That hunger where you wake up in the morning, you begin to read, you seek him with all your heart, and nothing could stop you. I remember when I got out of prison, I was so hungry for God. I mean, in prison, I would read eight hours a day because I had nothing else to do. It was, I thank God for prison. I know a lot of people are like, what you mean you thank God? Because prison made me who I am today. God used those shackles that eventually he liberated me from them because he had to put me in a place where I had no other choice but to count on him. So are you becoming so comfortable in your position that you're at right now that you're not seeking or striving like you used to before? You stop hungering for God. I'm going to tell you guys something. God will put you in a position where you're forced to cry out to him again. If to people, if you gave your life to God when you was in prison and you were seeking him and you stopped seeking him, it's a possibility that God will put you back in that prison so you seek him again. To people who've been in the hospital bed and that was the place that you gave your life to God to and you stopped seeking him after you're healed, after you're good, God will put you back in the hospital bed all so that you can cry out to him again. It's a possibility a lot of you guys are victorious. I don't know. But all I'm saying is stay hungry and stay thirsty for the presence of God. Don't get so comfortable where you're at right now. This is just the beginning. Hallelujah. So God will put you in a position where you will cry to him. I'm thirsty, God, I'm hungry, help me. Because eventually you cried that before and that you became so comfortable that you don't seek him like you used to. Hallelujah. And God will put you in a position where you have no other choice but to turn to him, where you find yourselves hitting all these dead ends where everything piles up at you at one time. You have no other choice but to turn to him. So my advice to you is serve God in the good times and serve God in the bad times and continue walking with him because they could get bad and you're going to need him. Hallelujah. So serve him in the good times. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't be so comfortable with where you're at right now that God doesn't become important anymore. Hallelujah. You get so comfortable where you're at right now that eventually to you, God doesn't become important. That's a bad sign. That's a very bad sign. Hallelujah. You know what? If you, if you get like that, that's exactly where Satan wants you. Because eventually you will open up a door to him. You don't want to open up a door to Satan. He's bad. Stay hungry and stay thirsty. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 6. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. Glory to God. My question to you is, what water supply are you drinking from? What cistern or fountain or well are you drawing water out of? What water supply are you drinking from? There's two water supplies that I'm going to touch on and then I'm done. There's the well of Jacob. And there's the well and fountain of heaven. Hallelujah. Jacob's well represents the well of man. I'm going to repeat that again. Jacob's well represents the well of men. Are you relying on man to help you? Hallelujah. It got quiet in here. Are you relying on a man to sustain you? Are you relying on man to comfort you when you feel lonely and anxiety? God is speaking. Are you relying on a man to fulfill your needs? And when I say men, I mean a whole lot of different stuff that has to do everything apart from God. I have bad news for you, if so, if you're relying on man. I have bad news for you today. Number one, man will fail you. Fail you terribly. Number two, man will betray you. Hallelujah. Number three, man doesn't have the last answer. Man doesn't have the last answer. Hallelujah. 
So if you're drawing from Jacob's well, it won't truly satisfy you. You will get thirsty again. It won't heal you. It won't restore you. It won't fulfill your desire. So it's time that you stop drawing out of Jacob's well. Glory to God. In the book of John, chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks this water will thirst again. The water from Jacob's well. But whoever drinks the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus told the woman at the well, if you drink this water, you will thirst again. If you're drinking out of Jacob's well, you will not be satisfied. Stop seeking for men to have the answers that you need answers that you need the loneliness that you have only God can fill that area stop seeking for man's help God is speaking to somebody in this place hallelujah thank you Jesus if you rely on man you will be failed but those that drink the water he said that I shall give shall never thirst again will never thirst again glory to God it's like if Jesus is saying I will never leave you nor forsake you I will never fail you. Those that come to me, I will never reject. I will protect them. I will love them. I will comfort them. I will counsel them. I will lead them. And I will give them from the eternal fountains where they will never thirst again. Why do I speak about this? Because Samson yelled, I thirst. It's a possibility that when Samson had that victory, after he had that victory, he probably thought he did it with his own power and strength. But God was showing him, you're just a man. You still need me. And after he had the victory, he probably fell on his knees and said, Lord, I thirst. Because God was showing him, you got to humble yourself. It is not by strength, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 1 and 2, it says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life. By the way, this is life water. Hallelujah. Clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Stop right there. This tells me something. They mentioned God, the throne of God, and they mentioned the throne of the Lamb, but they didn't mention the Holy Spirit in that in that scripture. Notice that? But they did mention the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna say it one more time. You ready? He showed me a pure river of water of life. That's it right there. Clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. They did mention the Holy Spirit in that scripture. The Holy Spirit is the water of life that flowed from the throne of God. Jesus said, if those that thirst, those that come to me, I'll give you water that when you drink of it, you will never thirst again. Those that believe in me, rivers of living water will flow through their hearts and belly. That river of living water is the Holy Spirit. Because where the Spirit is, there's liberty and there's life. Water is a symbol of life. Without water, the earth will die. Without the Holy Spirit, the earth will die. Without the Holy Spirit, you will die spiritually. You will become thirsty. Hallelujah. So, at first, the Spirit of God came upon Samson and the chains broke. He had the great victory after that. It's a possibility that he thought that victory was from him. Maybe the Holy Spirit departed. But after he drank the water, the Bible says he was revived and the Spirit returned to him water we need water it's a possibility that a lot of you have been walking this world spiritually dehydrated spiritually dehydrated and you're spiritually dying and you've been seeking for something in all the wrong areas you've been seeking for water in all the wrong fountains and all the wrong wells and all the wrong cisterns you go out and you think that's going to fulfill what you need You go out with your friends, you hang, you play a little pool, you drink, and you think that's going to bring you joy and peace. But let me tell you something. You've been seeking in all the wrong cisterns. The water that you need is only found in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everybody stand to their feet. If anybody in this place feels like I need you God like I've been trying to do it on my own strengths and I can't do it no more I've been trying to fight this war 
and I've been trying to do it without you. And I can't do it no more. I want to surrender. I want you to fight for me, God. I thirst. I've been through the war. I'm going through it right now, God. And I'm yelling out that I'm thirsty right now, God. Josh. Lights. I'm thirsty. I feel like I'm dying spiritually and I feel like nobody sees what I'm going through. I thirst, God. I'm just tired. There's so much things happening at one time. Everything is coming towards me at one time. I feel weighed down. I feel burdened. I feel like I'm not going to make it, God. Can you please give me that water? That water that you promised, Lord. That water that fills me. That water that gives me joy. That joy that I once had with you, Lord. That joy that I had when I was in your presence. I want that joy. Or I want to experience the joy that they experienced, Lord. I, I want to know what it is to know you personally. I want to draw more near to you, God. If that's you and you need prayer, maybe you've accepted Christ long ago and, and you left him and you want to reconcile to him. Or maybe you're, you're just going through it and you need his strength. I ask that you raise your hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. All those that raise their hand, I ask that you come up here in Jesus Christ's name. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? All right, praise God. Close your eyes. Repeat after me. Dear Father God, I come before you today knowing that I can't do it on my own. I've tried everything, but today I want to surrender. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins today. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life and erase my sins from the book of judgments. Give me of that living water, Jesus. And fill me, protect me, and guide me. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Praise God. What you need pray for, brother? Pray for him. Praise God. Raise your hands. Close your eyes. Father God. I just pray for Eric and Mercedes right now, Lord. Empower them in this walk, Lord God. Strengthen them. They've been trying to do this on their own strength, but God, right now, they're here. I pray that you give them the strength, Father God. Break every chain and shackle that hinders them or binds them and fill them with your Holy Spirit, God. Open their eyes, Lord. And I pray that you walk with them in this journey, Jesus. Strengthen them, Father God. It is not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, you say, God. I just pray, God, that they let go and allow you to work in their lives, Lord, and fill them with your Holy Spirit and bless them. Bless Mercedes, God, as she had finished graduating. Open doors for her. Bless Erica, God, her children, and strengthen her, Father God. Supply her needs, I pray, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else need prayer? This is a time where you can come to the fountain of living water. A time where you can come and receive strength from the Lord. Only God knows what you're going through. I don't know what you're going through. Maybe you're asking God for something. Asking God to open the door. Asking God to maybe protect a child or a family member. And he's going to do it. He knows everything. And you don't even have to come up here to the front. The word of God has the power to reach you where you at. So if you don't want to come up here to the front, but you need prayer, just raise your hand and I'll send the prayers. One. Perfect. Two. Father God, I just pray right now, Father, for every person in this place. Those that raised their hand and those that didn't raise their hand. I pray, God, that you give them the strength that they need to move forward in life. 
I rebuke every unclean spirit that rises up against them in Jesus' mighty name. I bind the strong man right now by the power and authority that you have given me, hands and feet. And I cast them out in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, Father God, I pray right now, that covers every person in this place. The blood of Jesus right now covers every person. Every yoke is broken. Every curse is broken. Strongholds are pulled down. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I shout and raise my voice, believing, Father God, that you have given me the authority. Any wall that's in front of them that's not allowing them to move forward, those walls come down like the walls of Jericho in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray for your protection over every person in this place. That your peace be with them, Father God, and that you fill them with the living water of your Holy Spirit. That your peace and joy returns to them as they leave this place. That they don't leave the same. That they leave transformed. And that this word that was spoken today be planted into their hearts. And allows them to understand and recognize that they're able to do it through you, God. That they have power and strength through you, God. And that you have given them something that they got to start using now for your glory and for your name's sake. And I pray this prayer in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen.